Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol Baskins. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. I don't know. Anyways, we're here at episode two of the Adverse Events of Special Interest, which Pfizer has released nine pages of side effects so far. Apparently there's more. I'd like to say that whenever producing vaccines, there's always side effects, okay? Like, I'm not saying, like, oh, all vaccines are, you know, out there currently are 100% safe. No, like, medicine is individual, and uh, what works for one doesn't necessarily work for all, right? Like, and that's just <laughs> science. Uh, anyways, okay, so I have uh, another list of adverse events of special interest to run through. Again, we'll keep it short. I don't want these videos to be super long, so it will be many, many videos over like a few long videos. So we left off at side effect number 17. They're not actually numbered. I've just been numbering them on my notes. So they're like, I know where I am. Anyways, uh, we are going to continue with acute motor axonal neuropathy, which is non-inflammatory disease where axons of the motor nerve cells are selectively targeted and destroyed by the body's own immune system. Sidebar, any of these side effects that I have talked about, like I am just giving you a brief description of what that is. There is so much more information to each side effect, including like symptoms and treatments and blah, 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 blah. So I'm just like cliff noting it for you guys. Moving on, acute myocardial infarction. I actually thought that was a spelling error, but it's not. Um, it's a myocardial necrosis resulting from acute obstruction of a coronary artery. Um, next is acute respiratory distress syndrome, which occurs when fluid builds up in the tiny elastic air sacs known as alveoli, and uh, which are in your lungs. And so what that does is it just like the fluid keeps your lungs from filling with enough air and then like it makes it hard to breathe, right? So, uh, acute respiratory failure. Acute respiratory failure happens quickly and without much warning. It is often caused by a disease or injury that affects your breathing, such as pneumonia, opioid overdose, stroke, or lung or spinal cord injury. Addison's disease. So people are getting Addison's disease. Oh God, I scrolled down way too far. Um, as a side effect of the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, 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 where are we? Oh, there we are. Mm. Addison's disease uh, is uh, affects your adrenal glands. So it's, they're located above your kidneys um, and it produces too much or too little cortisol. Often, um, all, all, all aldosterone is what it, producing too little of. Uh, administration site thrombosis. Okay, so the next two, administrative site thrombosis and administration site vasculitis. I had to look up and I'm still not 100% on what these specifically are because there wasn't any specific information on that wording. So I looked up thrombosis and vasculitis and so thrombosis is clotting and clogging of blood vessels at the end um uh, clotting and clogging of blood vessels so i'm assuming they're referring to this when they say administration site thrombosis is clotting and clogging of blood vessels at the injection site um and then vasculitis is an inflammation of blood vessels so again when they say administrative site administration site vasculitis i'm assuming that there's inflammation of the blood vessels at the injection site I, again i'm not certain on that next up is adrenal thrombosis 
the which is the occlusion of the main central adrenal vein with or without extension to the capsular veins resulting in hemorrhage and coagulant necrosis of the adrenal glands that sounds fucking fun uh, <laughs> uh next up is i'm probably totally saying this wrong uh agusia lost of taste function of the tongue primarily of the tongue Air, uh, agro, sorry, I'm molding two words together. A granulocytosis, a serious condition which occurs when there is an extremely low number of granulocytes, which is just a type of blood cell um, in the blood. Next up, air embolism, air entering the artery or vein that blocks the blood flow. I'm not really even sure how that's happening since it's intramuscularly injected, but okay. Uh, alanine aminotransferase abnormal. So they also have an alanine aminotransferase increased. So abnormal would just mean uh, maybe elevated al alanine, but um, not high. So, uh, so alanine is like, um, it's found in the liver. So like when you're getting blood work done and you see an ALT, um, readout, that's the enzyme that is um, being tested in your liver. And we've done this when we do this with, um, animal blood work, you know, with dogs and cats that come into, um, the vet clinic and a high ALT is indicative of limb of liver damage. So increased ALT is of concern. Doctors will want to monitor that because it's indicative of possible um, improperly functioning liver. And then the high elevated ALT is definitely an indication of uh, liver damage. So interesting. Um, okay. We're going to go through a couple more and then I'm going to call it quits on this video because we're going past my five minute time block. Uh, alcoholic seizure. Why are people having alcoholic seizures? Uh, allergic bronchiopulmonary mycosis, a clinical syndrome typically associated with immune sensitivity to fungi that colonize in the airways of those with asthma. Allergic oedema, fluid retention caused by an allergic reaction. And we will do two more. Oh, oh I hate To end at my number 35. So number 34, autoimmune hepatitis, which is liver inflammation that occurs when your body's immune system turns against liver cells and alopecia aredia, which is patchy baldness. Patchy baldness. That sounds just like fantastic. Okay, till next time.